Hey guys, great to see you and welcome back to another video. And thank you so much for joining me for this one. So this is like a kind of follow up from the previous video that we did, which we took a look at the Eric Clapton Unplugged album and many of the songs from the record. Now, because that video was particularly long, it didn't really give me the opportunity to discuss some of the things I would have liked to have fitted into that video. So that's why I'm back with this video. Now, whilst I will be referencing the Unplugged album, this, it's my hope at least, will help you with whatever you decide to learn. And I'm hoping that you'll come away at the end of this a little bit clearer, at least some of you, you know, some of you might have your own system in place, which you feel works very well, and that's absolutely fine. I should point out that I'm not saying, and I never do tend to say this is the only way of doing things. I just want to help you reach your goals and if I can help you do that, it gives me great satisfaction. So I know that when people are learning, and especially beginners and maybe even intermediate players, are never really sure about particular things. It's quite an ambiguous thing, right? So if you're learning a song, you don't know how long it should or shouldn't take, and you know, or how you should go about it, what's a good way of going around about learning a song and how we can avoid going around in circles and how we can streamline that process. Well, that's what I'd like to try and answer in this video. So if you break it down into processes, it makes the whole thing a lot simpler. So what I consider to be the very first process is getting familiar with the song, all right? So it's not really a great idea to start learning something that you're not totally familiar with because understandably you're going to struggle in some way, right? So spend a little bit of time just listening to the song. You don't need your guitar to do that. In fact, it can be a distraction, right? So just spend a little bit of time and have a listen to the songs that you like and the songs that maybe one day you'd like to learn. Maybe you can make a playlist or something like that, right? Or you can just choose one off the Unplugged album and think, I'm going to go for this. And we'll come back to making good choices. So don't worry too much about that. But if you do that, then you'll be getting acquainted with all those songs if you have a playlist and you just play it on a fairly regular basis, then you're going to get familiar with all these songs that you'd like to learn. So that makes sense, right? So that's probably the first step that I would suggest people make. Now, once you've done that and you're familiar with the song, next comes the process almost like the mechanical process in a sense, right? So you could choose, let's say for argument's sake, something I've done a lesson on, like we said, from the Unplugged album. So you download the chord arrangement and you have a look at that and you have a look at the chords and you think, well, I know 90% of those chords, right? So that's great. There's only three or four chords there I don't really know very well. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to learn those chords that I'm not totally familiar with so I don't have any difficulties whilst I'm then trying to connect all those chords together into the arrangement. So that's a good step to follow. And then you spend a little bit of time on those chords that you're not completely familiar with. Okay, so we're moving things along now in a more streamlined way maybe. And then once we've done that, we can then concentrate on learning the chord arrangement. Now this is very often the stage, particularly for beginners, whereby it, we're like this, we're looking at both hands and we're, we can't, we have no idea what else is going on in the world, right? We're just so focused on, right, this is a C, now this must be a G and this is an F and, you know, we really, it's taking absolutely all of our resources to focus 100% on what we're doing if we're going to have any chance of being able to do this stage, all right? Now, that's normal. Don't worry about that too much. We all go through that phase, and that changes as the years roll by as well, right? But there's very definitely a period where things are like that, okay? And that's fine. No problem. So, if you can then devote the time, it's very, very important actually to devote the time to being able to put those chords where they belong in the arrangement as a first step. Now, the second step to that process would be to make sure that all the transitions between one chord and another are very, very smooth or as smooth as you can get them, right? So it could be that initially it's it's not terribly smooth, all right? 
and you know as with all of these things there is no magic solution so let's just make that very very clear the only thing that's going to get you somewhere is the time that you put in and when you realize that everything becomes very simple right okay so this stage that we're talking about now is very much about being able to get those transitions really nice and smooth that's what separates let's say the beginner from the intermediate player and the beginner you can hear that those transitions are just not smooth whereas as you get better they flow and you don't think oh that was a bit sticky it just flows so you could in a sense say that once you've learned the mechanics all right of what's involved thereafter it's all about refinement and i think that's what eric clapton's kind of talking about when he talks about it being a lifetime's work learning robert johnson it's it's not the mechanics it's the subtleties and the refinement that can take a lifetime now that's not a bad thing right so you shouldn't think of that as like a you know oh my god this is a lifetime's work it's a lifetime's enjoyment as much as anything else and it's important to realize that right we can have so much fun along the way in fact that's really what it's about every time we pick up the guitar it should be you know enjoyable from that point of view right okay and one other thing i'd like to just point out before we move on from that is you know i mentioned this stage whereby you know we can't we're looking at our right hand or left hand or it might just be one of our hands but we're riveted and we can't think of anything else like i say perfectly normal right but the thing is is that we want to get away from that as soon as we possibly can so it's very very important that once we've learned the mechanics to start thinking to ourselves do i really need to be so riveted to what i'm doing can that just not start happening automatically well the answer is yes it can right but we need to bring our mind to what we're doing and think right okay it may be if i look away i start making a little mistake here and there but really, this is not how I want to spend my life playing this song just by being riveted to it. Now, this is one of the reasons why I sometimes point out to people it's a great idea to try and sing with any song that you're learning. And if you can't sing, just speak the words out. You've probably heard me say that many times, but it's for good reason, guys, because what that does is it pulls your attention away from the guitar. Then the guitar seems to somehow get a little bit easier and and begins to happen by itself it doesn't happen overnight right but if by having this approach so what i'm trying to say here is that it's important for us as soon as we possibly can rather than being this person who's like this right that happens for a while granted but we must after a certain amount of time say to ourselves right i'm going to try and come away from that and i'm going to try and be the person outside myself looking down on what i'm doing now that's when the real magic happens when we start to uh, get that ability to almost step out of ourselves and look at what we're doing then we take on a much more of an analytical role almost in a sense like a teacher type of role so it's very important to realize that and you, you can anybody can do this right so you know you don't feel you have to be at a certain level to do this all you're trying to do is just to like look down if you imagine you're trying to look down on what you're doing and thinking how could i do that a little bit better that's where a lot of the magic is and sometimes these things are, can be quite difficult to explain but if you can bring about that uh, you know ability it will serve you so well okay so that's something else for you to bear in mind and really once you get that going you'll see what i mean you'll start thinking less about what am i doing and you'll start thinking i know what i'm doing cut yourself a little bit of slack right you you will i mean admittedly all of these little things take a bit of time right but we've just got to try and pull ourselves away from some of the things that we don't want to be doing for a long time because we can have a tendency to do some of these things. I'm using this as an example quite a lot, right? But for good reason, because what can happen is this becomes a habit going like this 
for far, far longer than it needs to be. So be aware of that. I want to bring it to your attention and then that way you'll be able to do something about it. Another really important factor to bear in mind when we're learning songs is song choice. And this is an area whereby we can really help ourselves or we can really hinder ourselves by making the appropriate choices, as it were. So it makes sense, right? If we've just been playing for six months or 12 months, we don't start trying to play songs which are well out of our league, you know? Because that can lead to like disillusionment and frustration and can almost take us to a place whereby we think, you know, guitar isn't for me. I, I could never play that. That, you know, I've spent like two months and I, I can't even play the intro. So that's not something that we want to be feeling about our playing. And of course, you could argue that that's the wrong approach anyway, that it's important to realise that if we come up against obstacles like that, to think that's just a long term project. I'll get there. I'm, you know, I'm not in any rush and I'll just play a little bit daily basis. When it happens, it happens. So attitude plays a huge part as well in what we're doing. And if we have the right attitude, that's going to carry us a long way. But nevertheless, we still have to make good choices, right? So if we've been playing six months, 12 months, and somebody says to me, what would be a, you know, a good song to, to have a go at? I would, without any hesitation, just say, before you accuse me. In fact, I think I might have said that on the video. Because whilst it's got a fancy intro and a solo, the fundamentals of the song are just the blues shuffle in the key of E. Now, that is something that you could get down relatively quickly with a bit of effort. And of course, all these things are subject to how much you practice. So, before you accuse me would be a good choice, short-term choice. And then... As we've said, once we get the mechanics down, once we can put all the changes where they belong and stuff like that, then it's a lifetime of just refinement. Even simple songs, they will get better and better and better as years roll by and you continue to play the songs. Then you might say, well, uh, yeah, that's great. Okay, so I've made a good choice. I'm going to have something down relatively quickly. That's always encouraging. It can, you know, encourages me to continue on and... I have a great feeling of, you know, accomplishment. I've done something really good and I've achieved this. So I should have a midterm kind of goal as well. And that might be something which is going to take us, you know, a few months to, to start getting the mechanics down. And then we might have a long-term project. Now, the right attitude is really going to help you. Like I say, if you've got a long-term project... And you have the attitude, this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. I've been playing long enough to know that this is certainly one for the future. I'm not too worried about how, how long it takes. I'm happy to spend, you know, dedicate 10, 15 minutes every other day to practicing this because I would love to play it one day. And as long as you don't put all these kind of restrictions on yourself and pressure on yourself and... You know, like I've said to you many, many times, if you can enjoy the journey and not be in any rush, it's all about the journey. Very often, I, I've enjoyed the journey of learning something far more than the destination, in fact, because once you're at the destination, you play it. Yeah, it's great for that period of time, like I say, and then the refinement kicks in and you know that you, you know, you're you going to have to play a whole lot longer to get it where you want to get it to. But I find a lot of joy in the learning and the journey, you know, so... If you can do that, I think that will carry you a long way. So I really do hope that you'll share some of your feedback with me. And I might even come back if there's enough of that feedback and answer some of your questions in relation to what we've been talking about here. Perhaps you can share some of your experiences. That's always great to hear. So I hope that you've got something from this. I mean, I could talk about this for a very long time, but they're just some of the things I wanted to touch upon which might make a difference when it comes to you choosing particular songs and how you go about learning them. So thank you for spending your time with me on this video and I look forward to seeing you soon with another one and in the meantime you take care.